section 2 to 1 is on relations and functions. You'll recall from Algebra 1 that a relation is just a set of ordered pairs. However, a function is a relation in which each element of the no domain, that is the x's, is paired with exactly one element of the range, that is the y's. So in other words, each x goes to only one y. There's a couple different types of functions. First type is called one to one. It contains no repeated x's and no repeated y's. Each x is paired up with a distinct y. An onto function can have repeated x's. Oh, I'm sorry. An onto function has no repeated x's, but repeated y's are OK, and all of the possible y's are used. And a function that is both one to one and onto has no repeated x's or y's, and all the y's are used. So let's take a look at a couple examples here. It says state the domain and range of each relation, then determine whether each relation is a function. If it is a function, determine if it is one to one, onto, both, or neither. So our first example here, you'll recognize as a mapping, and you'll see that five is mapped to three, six is mapped to negative eight, and negative two is mapped to one. So the domain of this is gonna be the set of the elements in the first bubble, or negative two, five, and six. The range is going to be the set of elements in the second bubble, or negative eight, one, and three. And because each x goes to only one y, it is indeed a function, and I like to abbreviate function FNC. And this is actually both one to one and on two. both one to one and on to because there are no repeated x's and no repeated y's. Example number two here is just a graph of four distinct points. The domain, I'll just read off the x values here. So negative two, one, and four. The range is the y values or negative one, two, three, and five. And you'll notice that this is not a function. And the reason it is not a function is because, I'll go ahead and mark it here in pink, here we have a one as my x and I also have a one here as x. So I have repeated x's so this graph is not a function. Number three here is a table. And my domain, I'm just going to read the numbers out of the x column. Negative two, one, four, and eight. My range, I'm just going to read the numbers out of the y column, negative 4, negative 2, and 6. And this is indeed a function because none of my x's repeat. However, this function is not one-to-one -one because you'll see that there's two different x's that go to the same y. So it's not one-to-one, -one, but it is onto because it's okay to have repeated y's and all of my y's are being used. A discrete relation is graphed as a set of dots or unconnected points, and it's going to look like this here, just a bunch of kind of random points, points on the coordinate plane. A continuous relation is graphed as a line or a smooth, in, uninterrupted curve, as this one here is. The way I remember this, if it's discrete, it's made up of dots. If it's continuous, it's a curve. And in a continuous relation, the domain must have an infinite number of elements. In other words, x can be anything all real numbers. And you'll recall this as well from Algebra 1, the vertical line test. It's a good way to determine if the graph of a relation is a function, and that is if a vertical line intersects the graph at only one place at a time, then it is a function. If the vertical line intersects, intersects the graph at two places at the same time, then it is not a function. So let's take a look at a couple more examples here. This says graph each equation determine the domain and range, and determine whether, the whether it's a function, whether it's one-to-one, -one, onto, or both, and state whether it's discrete or continuous. So this first one obviously is a line. You'll recognize it being in y equals mx plus b form. And if you recall, we graph this by graphing the y-intercept, which is 4, and then using the slope to move. In this case, the slope is 5, which means up 5 and right 1, or down 5 and left 1. And because it is a line, I'll connect this. 
and you can see that it does pass the vertical line test, so it is indeed a function. Its domain, as is the domain of all non-vertical lines, is all real numbers. And its range, as is for all non-vertical lines, also all real numbers. Okay. This function is actually both one to one and on to. And this is going to be a continuous function. Let's take a look at our next example. y equals 3x squared. You'll recognize this as a parabola. And even though you may know how to do this on your calculator, I'd still like you to be able to graph it without that by making a table of values. So I'm going to choose negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Plug those in for my x's. And when I plug in negative 2 or 2, I'm going to get a 12. When I plug in either 1 or negative 1, I'll get 3. And 0 gives me a 0. So let's go ahead and plot those points. 0, 0, 1, oops, not that one, 1, 3, and negative 1, 3. And then 2 is going to be 12, which is going to go off in my graph up here. So I have a parabola opening upward that's very tight to the y-axis. And the domain of this is going to be all real numbers. But you'll notice that the graph does not go below the y-axis. So my range does not include any negative numbers. So my range is the set of all y such that y is greater than or equal to 0. And this is indeed a function because it passes the vertical line test. And it is not one-to-one -one because actually two different x's go to the same y. And it is not on to because I'm not using all of these y values down here below the y-axis. So this is neither one-to-one -one nor on to, and it is a continuous function because it's a curve. You may also recall this from Algebra 1. We have something called an independent variable, which is generally the x, and those are the values that you choose to plug into the function. In physics and in other sciences, the independent variable is often time. The dependent variable is generally the y, and it's called that because its value depends on the value of x. You probably also recognize this function notation from Algebra 1, f with an x in parentheses, and we say that f of x. It's just a fancy say way to say y, and it's a good expression because it shows that the dependent variable actually depends on the independent. You have the independent variable kind of couched inside the function notation here. So let's do a couple examples. So if we're given that f of x equals negative x squared plus 3, we need to find each value. So in order to find f of 5, I'm going to plug in 5 for x. So negative 5 squared plus 3. Now, notice I didn't bother with parentheses here. I, I could have, I guess. Maybe this would be a little bit better. But what I really need to do first is square the 5 and then multiply it by negative 1. So 5 squared is 25 times negative 1 is 25, plus 3 gives me a negative 22. So in other words, when x is 5, f of x is negative 22. And for my second example here, we have f of negative 3. So I have a negative, and then I want a negative 3 squared plus 3. Okay. So that's going to give me negative 3 squared is a positive 9. So a negative 9 plus 3 gives me a value for this function of negative 6. So f of negative 3 is equal to negative 6. In this section, we talked a lot about relations and functions. We defined what a function is, and we talked about a lot of the different characteristics that a function can have, being one-to-one -one or on-to, being continuous or discrete. We also talked about its domain and range, and we took a look at function notation.